There's a big change coming next year to the 2026 F-150. Trucks like this one will have a gasoline particulate filter. That's right, GPFs are coming to the United States. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus HV Talk, standing in front of a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. They also come in the 3.5 liter EcoBoost with the hybrid setup, the PowerBoost. I have confirmation from Don McKenzie, she's the Ford Trucks Communication Manager. I also have confirmation from different dealerships that have checked in their systems. Now this gasoline particulate filter will work slightly different than a diesel particulate filter, but it has the same purpose, to get particulate matter out of the exhaust. I have my story up on pickuptrucktalk.com. I brought it with me to make sure we get all the details correctly. So these filters have been in use in Europe for the last decade or so. What their job is, is like I said, to get the particulate matter out of the exhaust. Now looking at some photos online, we believe these gasoline particulate filter will be mounted by the catalytic converter. It just makes sense. We need the heat and catalytic converter in that exhaust system to clean out the soot coming in that filter. So this system will have a passive regen, not an active regen. They'll have an active regen built into it, but more of a passive regen. That's different than the diesel particulate filters, where you have a regen process, the engine heats up, burns that soot. Because gasoline engines work differently than diesel engines, we don't have to have that same active regen. Typically when you put your foot on the gas with a gasoline vehicle, it's going to go through passive regen, burn that soot off. We know that because they've been in use in Europe for over a decade now. I've been watching some of the videos over there and reading some of the comments and talking to some people over there. And essentially you put your foot on the gas and it burns off that soot. So we may not have the same plugging issues we've had the DPF, but we don't know that yet. Okay, so we know it's probably going to mounted by the catalytic converter, but we don't know for sure yet. Why? The details in the 2026 model aren't out yet, and so I've been struggling to find any images or anything that really show what this looks like. So I have some pictures of what it looks like, I have some patent when it went to the Australian market. That's basically what I have, because at the time of this filming, the details just aren't out yet. So just know it's going to come on those models. Now I double checked and looked at the 5 liter V8, and I don't see gasoline particulate filters on those engines, just on the turbocharged engines in the Ford lineup. So then the question is, does it actually work? Does the particulate matter actually get filtered out with this filter? I mean, is it even necessary? So there was a study done by the National Health Institute. They took one of these four different 50s with the EcoBoost engine, they put it through its paces. They ran a variety of tests, different stages. So they did cold starts, they did under load, zero to 60 testing, they did 60 mile testing for a long period of time, and they measured the particulate matter coming out of the exhaust with and without the gasoline particulate filter. And they found that with the filter, it reduced particulate matter by 98 to 99 percent coming out of the exhaust. Okay, what's happening? Why are we getting this gasoline particulate filter? What's going on? Well, this is part of level four of the Clean Air Act as far as emissions rules. These are the rules that are worked together in part with the EPA, the National Highway Tra Traffic Safety Administration, with whatever current president's in place, with the rules makers get in place, with stakeholders from conservatives to liberals to air quality people to non-air quality people, they all get together to decide air quality rules. And so this was decided several years ago, and they decided they're gonna focus on the 2027 through 2032 rules are gonna focus on criteria pollutants. Criteria pollutants are a bunch of compounds that contribute to smog and respiratory illnesses. So smog, respiratory illnesses, environment, and public health. And to do that, they're focusing on NOx gases and particulate matter. So you'll see those changes impacting those model years. Now, why did Ford do this in 2026, not wait for 2027? It's a great question, and here's why. I think that's why. I can't get confirmation on this. But here's my theory, is that the 2026 model is supposed to be brand new this year, but they couldn't get it done because of some changes in the economy. Economic uncertainty pushed back the launch of the new 2026 model. So they decided to move forward on certain aspects of it instead of holding back from suppliers who are already make, planning on making these changes. Remember, suppliers invest millions, if not billions collectively on new vehicle launches. And they've signed these contracts already. So you can't really hold back the horses out of the stable when they've already opened the barn doors, right? You gotta let those suppliers move forward. So this is a change they're planning on doing anyways. So it doesn't affect the cosmetics of the cosmetic, I should say more accurately, of the overall vehicle. So they just decided to move forward with that change. What about other automakers? I reached out to GM, I reached out to Ram, and I reached out to Toyota as far as the major truck manufacturers. And they all said, no, 
none of their 2026 models have gasoline ticket filters, and none of the V8s have gasoline ticket filters. That doesn't mean it's not coming. We already know that the 3.4 liter V6 in the Tundra, for example, is sold with a gasoline ticket filter overseas. Now what about performance? These gasoline ticket filters, do they impact stuff? They do. They have some performance differences. So the 2026 3.5 liter EcoBoost now produces 382 horsepower and the PowerBoost produces 420 horsepower. Well, in 2025, those engines produced 400 and 430. So 382 minus 400, 420 minus 430. So not a huge difference behind the wheel. The torque numbers are the same. And as far as I can tell, fuel economy numbers are the same. Okay, now finally, the big question, right? We have President Trump in office who is disrupting the entire government, making big changes, and makes, begs the question, can he just tell EPA Administrator Lee Zeldin to knock all this stuff off, change the rules, delete all this stuff, make none of this stuff happen? No, they're really not the way they're gonna do it. They, they have congressional oversight committees, they have lawsuits that come out of this stuff, they just can't make changes that fast in the federal government. That's not how the government works. And also we have EPA Administrator Lee Zeldin saying that he's not gonna look at the 27 through 32 rules. They're not, you can't go back in time and change those. That change should have happened back in like 22 and 21, actually probably during Trump's first term, they should have made those changes. So he's looking at changes to the 2032 rules and forward. He's looking at changes to the greenhouse gas emissions that aren't part of the criteria pollutants, two different types of rules. So EPA Administrator Lee Zillin's already come on record saying in different videos have done this, different documents linked to in my website story, they're not looking at that, they're not gonna make a change, it's not happening. So sorry, President Trump is not gonna make a change on that. And I don't see automakers wanting him to because they're already designing engines, already buying parts, already doing things to work with these new gasoline ticket filters. So there you go, that's the story on the Ford F-150 for 2026 and it's gonna impact your 2027 models. Is reliability gonna be a big concern with these? According to the sources in Europe, it's not as big a concern as it was with the diesel particulate filters, but it's still early guys, we just don't know. Hey, for more things that I'm still wondering about, or maybe you are too, check out the videos up over here, website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. Put a link to my article in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.